two Queen Marys were caught up in the turbulence of the religious power struggle in Tudor England. They still haunt the houses where they had found respite or been imprisoned amidst the political machinations in the 16th century. One Mary has even followed the fittings which were sold. In 1553, Mary Tudor, Henry VIII's eldest daughter, had fled to Sawston Hall near Cambridge, then a medieval manor house, after the powerful Duke of Northumberland attempted to imprison her. When her young half-brother, King Edward VI, died of tuberculosis, the Duke tried to stage a coup, seizing the Tower of London and proclaiming his daughter-in-law, Lady Jane Grey, Queen. Before the news had even reached Mary, the Duke sent his troops north to capture her by dawn. She was asleep in the tapestry room when her host, John Huddleston, learnt of the approaching danger. In the early hours of the morning, he awoke her and smuggled her out of the hall's back door, disguised as a milkmaid. Mary was on a nearby hilltop when she was able to rein in her horse and watch the Duke's frustrated soldiers set fire to Sawston. After becoming queen just days later, Mary showed her gratitude to the Huddleston family by rebuilding them an even grander hall. Since her passing in 1558, Bloody Mary, so called because of her persecution of Protestants during her five-year reign, has been regularly seen there in the tapestry room which survived the fire. Even today, her ghost is seen gliding serenely through the house where she is described as smiling and happy as she was there in life. She can also be seen majestically walking the grounds, sometimes moving at great speed through the gardens in perhaps a reenactment of her escape. People have also reported the ghostly strains of the spinet which she used to play for her father and the sound of a girl laughing. Those who have spent the night in Mary's room, the tapestry room where she slept and reputed to be the most haunted part of the house, report being disturbed by apparitions and the sounds of someone rapping at the door and also fiddling with the latch. Nocturnal tappings have also been reported in a bedroom nearby. There are other spectral occupants of the house. A so-called Lady in Grey also appears in the tapestry room, where she knocks three times at the door and then floats across the room. Rather more frighteningly, there are also reports of an invisible, malicious spirit, which is said to be responsible for physically accosting a woman and ripping off almost all of her clothing. Mary Stuart, Queen of Scots, spent years as a captive in English mansions and castles before Elizabeth I had her executed at Fotheringhay Castle in 1587. Mary was moved from home to home, becoming a focus of affiliation for those opposing the Protestant good Queen Bess, and her ghost has been reported in many of the places that were her prisons. According to the Scotsman newspaper, even today her physical presence can be felt more than four centuries after her demise. As well as being Scotland's most famous queen, she's also its most ubiquitous ghost, as spectral Marys appear in nearly all of the places that she was known to have inhabited or even visited. There are few surviving stately homes in Scotland that cannot claim frequent appearances by her spirit. Mary often visited Stirling Castle, where she also sent her son James to be brought up. A ghost reported as haunting the castle, known as the Pink Lady, is thought to be that of the Queen. Another apparition there, called the Green Lady, is said to be her servant who rescued the Queen after a bedside table set fire to her sheets. At Borthwick Castle, Midlothian, Mary has been reported to appear dressed as a page boy. She stayed in the castle in 1567 after her unpopular marriage to the Earl of Bothwell and escaped disguised as a man. Seemingly in constant flight, Mary ended up a prisoner at Loch Leven Castle where her spirit is said to have lingered. After her escape from Loch Leven, she sought refuge at Craig Nethan Castle near Lanark. This is said to be another favourite haunt of Mary's where she stayed only briefly before the Battle of Langside. It was reported that her headless apparition began appearing there after her execution. Mary hauntings are often accompanied by a cast of extras. Glam's castle hosts the ghost of a young boy who is thought to have been Mary's servant. 
the palace of Holyrood House bears a stain on the floor of Mary's apartment, which is said to be the blood shed by her secretary, David Rizzio, slain by order of her husband. Some witnesses claim that the blood stain has been scrubbed clean multiple times, only to reappear overnight. After Mary was forced to abdicate in favour of her infant son and seek assistance from the English Queen, she was imprisoned at various castles where her ghost has been spotted in the courtyards. In 1878, a guest at Napper Hall, Wensleydale in Yorkshire, claimed he had met what he described as a very lovely ghost and whom he recognised from portraits as Mary. She was tall and slim and wearing a black velvet gown. Mary had visited the hall while under arrest at nearby Castle Bolton. The Earl of Shrewsbury kept Mary prisoner at three of his castles and in the 1930s her apparition was sighted walking through walls at the turret house of the Earl's Manor Lodge in Sheffield, Yorkshire. When held captive at Fotheringhay Castle in Northamptonshire, Mary managed to attend Mass undetected by visiting Southwick Hall three miles away via an underground tunnel. Her spirit has been sighted there, still roaming the tunnel. Beaulieu, Hampshire was the scene of another of Mary's escapes during her long years in captivity. Even today, ghostly footsteps are heard rushing down the palace house staircase that she used for her freedom dash. Very little remains of Fotheringhay Castle, where Mary was put on trial and executed at the age of 44. Her son, King James VI of Scotland and later James I of England, and grandson, ordered that the castle be completely demolished and accordingly it was virtually razed to the ground in the early 17th century. Many of the fittings from inside its stone walls were bought by a local innkeeper, William Whitwell, including the oak staircase by which Mary reached her room and also descended to her execution. Whitwell later installed the staircase in his inn, now the Talbot at Oundle in Northamptonshire, and found to his dismay that a phantom was part of his purchase. Mary had left her mark when she gripped the staircase to keep her balance as she walked down to her doom. Her ring, in the shape of a crown, was found to have left an indentation in the shape of a crown on the banister rail. Mary's ghost has reportedly been seen on many occasions walking down the staircase. Furniture has also been found to be moved around the hotel and a painting of Mary's execution has been seen to suddenly jump off the wall where it hangs. A great amount of paranormal activity has also been experienced in the room named after Mary, with one particular guest suddenly feeling a clammy invisible hand pushing them against the bed. <laughs>